In this video, we discuss the change in entropy in phase transitions. All right, to start with, we're going to provide a primer on the phase transitions that are important in chemistry. Okay, so uh, the phases that we worry about are the solid, the liquid, and the gas. And a phase transition is simply a change uh, in the state of matter. Okay, so there's various types of phase transitions. Uh, the solid to liquid, we call that fusion. Uh, and the reverse one, uh, we call that freezing. And then liquid to gas, we call that vaporization. And then gas to liquid, we call that condensation. And then there's also phase transitions between the solid and the gas, which would be sublimation. And then uh, the gas trying to assolate is what we call deposition. So our goal in this video is going to be uh, calculating the change in entropy when uh, any of these phase transitions uh, take place. Great, uh, the first thing we can think about is whether we can predict the sign of the change in entropy. And obviously, uh, it seems uh, natural to think that a solid, a solid is intrinsically less entropic than a liquid and a gas, right? If you uh, try to use the metaphor of disorder uh, as a metric for entropy, a gas is far more disordered than a liquid than a solid, and therefore you would expect uh, the gas to have more entropy than a liquid and a solid. What that means is that the change in entropy uh, going from left to right in this diagram, uh, that would be always positive, and then any phase transition from right to left would actually be a change in entropy, uh, that change in entropy would be negative. The question is, well, how do we calculate this change in entropy uh, accurately? Well, uh, the general definition for the change in entropy is, is uh, the reversible heat over the temperature. This equation applies well uh, when you have an isothermal process. And phase transitions are processes that are isothermal. They're also isobaric which means uh, that there is constant pressure. Okay, so uh, one of the benchmark phase transitions would be the vaporization of liquid water into the gas, in which we will have is this liquid water, and then uh, one atmosphere of pressure, and then 100 Celsius, and then that would turn into the gas. That would be what the vaporization would be at the same pressure, ATM, and at the same temperature, 100 Celsius. So uh, here you can clearly see that phase transitions, in this case of vaporization, is a process uh, that takes place at constant temperature and then constant pressure. Constant temperature is nice because that means that we know what that T is in the equation for the change in entropy. And then constant pressure, what allows us to do is to actually map this heat into something uh, that we can obtain easily from tables. Okay. First of all, uh, we have to think about what reversible uh, means in a phase transition. Uh, ultimately, reversible processes require uh, equilibrium. Okay, and a phase transition is a process that takes place at equilibrium. So every phase phase transition is going to be reversible. What that means is that here we uh, don't have to worry about what that uh, reversible substrate is, because every phase trans transition will be reversible. Okay, now because we're operating at constant pressure, we know that uh, then this is going to be equal to Q sub P over T, but that is equal to delta H at constant pressure. Okay, so if we know the enthalpy of the phase transition, then uh, we will be able to calculate the change in entropy right away. And it turns out that the enthalpies of common phase transitions are well known. Okay, for example, the one that we have right here would be the vaporization of a liquid to a gas. Obviously, a gas is something that has more energy than a liquid, so you have to add some energy uh, into this liquid at 100 Celsius in order to get the gas, right? So we expect the uh, enthalpy, the change in enthalpy of vaporization, which we can write like this. This is going to be in molar to be a positive number. And again, this is well known. Under these conditions, this number happens to be 40.7 kilojoules per mole, right? And the same uh, uh, enthalpies of phase transition exist for fusion, or for molecules other than water, there are extensive tables where you can have 
all of the changes in entropies for all of these phase transitions for a variety of molecules under some uh, conditions of temperature and pressure. Okay, so because we have those enthalpies, then the calculation of the entropy is actually going to be straightforward. Something that will happen here is that uh, because the enthalpies are uh, generally on a per mole basis, then the changes in entropy that we will, we will be calculating generally will be also more. Okay, so then what we have to do is simply uh, the change in entropy in the evaporation of water on a per mole basis is simply going to be equal to the enthalpy of vaporization of water per mole over the temperature. The data here are uh, 40.7 uh, times 10 to the 3 joules per mole. And then the temperature at which this takes place will be 373 Kelvin. OK, so when you uh, do that calculation, this happens to be plus 109 joules per mole Kelvin. So it's a molar change in entropy. Now notice that you get here a positive sign, and that makes perfect sense because, again, we were predicting that a gas should be more entropic than the liquid is something that is clearly more disordered than the liquid is. All right, so in this video we have seen uh, how simple it is to calculate the change in entropy in phase transitions.